Intertech have asked us if we do a video on how to insulate their new antifreeze valve. They have two types, the ZER001, and that's got inch male, and the ZER028, which like this one, has 28 mil compression. Now it's really important to insulate all this for two reasons. One is to reduce any heat loss, and the other is to slow down the temperature loss if there is ever a power cut. So we're slowing down the temperature, so say it's a return 40 degrees, it'll slow down that temperature. We've got a lot more time for the power to then be restored. So the, the, uh, the antifreeze valve doesn't have to blow off. Let's look at the antifreeze valve itself. So at the top here, you've got the vacuum brake. This has to be kept clear. It's got the holes at the top, which will let the air out if it ever does have to release water. Then inside here, as you can see, there is a wax element, like the sensor is in the waterways. So that is sensing the water temperature. And that, if it gets down to three degrees, will then release the water. So then at the bottom here, we have the thermostatic discharge cartridge. And at the end, that is where the water comes out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a video on how to insulate all this and try and insulate as much as possible for heat loss. So the first thing we'd need to do is cut a piece of insulation. The best size for ours is the 35 by 19 because then it'll go all the way around without putting an extra piece in the bottom. So we've got 28 by 19 on this side, 28 by 19 on this side and 35 by 19 here. What we need to do then is cut a hole on the bottom and a hole on the top. So that size hole would be around 29, 30 millimeters. And this hole here would be around 19, 20 millimeters. So we've got two Rothenberger core cutters here. And what we'll do is we'll cut holes at the top and the bottom. To make that easier, it's best to use a long drill and then drill all the way through so you can centralize the two holes. Because as you can see, they're both central. So we'll do that. And then once we've done that, we'll show you how to seal it up. We'll seal around the bottom and also the top, making sure that we don't get any bond and seal around here that could then cause a problem with the air holes here in the vacuum brake. And then what we'll do is seal all around here and here to then make the perfect seal. is already made now holes are made cut down we're going to seal around here first so put some bond and seal all around here and then when you put the insulation on it'll slide over so making sure there's no bond and seal around here so no moisture or water can get into here and no energy can get out once we've done that we pop that on yeah we need to go underneath just pop it back Bond and seal, bond and seal, bond and seal around here. Pop that on like that. A few tie wraps that'll hold that. Once it's set, give it a few hours. Then all you do is take the tie wraps off and then seal all this up. Into there, seal all around. Because as you can see, this is 35 by 19. This is 28 by 19. So you just need to feather this in. Bond and seal on each side. So you've capped them, capped them. And then that'll just stop any uh, moisture getting in and any energy heat getting out. We'll do that now.
two hours later. We've taken the tie wraps off. It's still tacky, but we can work with that. We're going to seal it up here, seal around there, and then we're going to seal and feather these in so they're both capped. Then that's finished. So we've finished now, we've sealed both sides, we've capped and sealed, so no moisture can get in and no energy can get out. We've also sealed around the top where the vacuum brake is, but the vacuum brake is all clear. On the bottom, where the thermostatic cartridge is, this is exposed here, but all the bottom is sealed and capped. If you wanted to, you could cut a piece of insulation, use the bond and seal to protect these areas, and then bond and seal that onto there if you like, and that would give some extra insulation around here. If not, just leave it exposed there. On the maintenance side, every year you're checking the insulation for no rips or tears. If it starts to go a bit of a gray color, then just recoat once or every four years. That's what we recommend. On the annual service, just make sure you're checking this area here and making sure that the holes are free and all the debris is clear from around here. <laughs> 